Hi everyone, I'm Jane Grohl, CEO of the DevOps Institute, and I'm delighted to be here today at JFrog Swamp Up for the second year, talking about the hybrid DevOps product team, a new approach for a, a new normal. So a little bit about DevOps Institute, if you're not familiar with us, we are a global member organization that whose mission is really to advance the humans of DevOps. And we do that by equipping the individual with skills, knowledge, ideas, and learning. Our membership is currently free. So please go up to our website and join. We have research, we have events, uh, we have bodies of knowledge, and certainly we have uh, quite a few assets to help you grow individually and to help you support your organization. So I think it comes as no surprise that the world shifted so suddenly and drastically in 2020, and it didn't affect just a single region of the world. It affected everyone. It affected every business. It affected uh, businesses that had presence in multiple uh, global region. And for those of us in IT, I would like to say that I think we're the unsung heroes. Certainly there was the first responders, the healthcare professionals, those that are actively trying to work on treatments, but it is the tech community that was responsible for pivoting their organization very quickly, very dramatically, with no notice. And in many ways, it revealed some of the successes and perhaps some of the challenges that that organization faced before the pandemic and certainly will need to address as we start to return to some type of, of operating model. And so when we look at what's the new normal, and, and I don't have a crystal ball, I can't necessarily tell you what the new normal is going to look like, but I will tell you something. Digital transformation is no longer optional. I think if enterprises learned anything during this experience, that organizations that could pivot not only to work at home, I think that was significant because of its impact on security and capacity and productivity, but also looking at our operating models from a technology perspective, uh, how we were able to maintain some type of normality, how we were able to collect data, how we were able to continue innovating, um, whether you were an on-prem hybrid or cloud environment. But the old normal is not going to be the new normal. And, and I think that this past half year, I mean, I can't believe we're in June, that this past half, half year really uncovered a lot of the pain areas that enterprises have faced, but now we've been pushed into the future, probably would have gotten there anyhow, but we've been pushed into the future very, very, very suddenly. So today I really wanna talk about uh, what does that look like from a human perspective? And from my point of view, if anything's become clear, we're going to move away from single product teams where uh, in a traditional agile environment or even a traditional DevOps environment, uh, the teams were composed of people with like skills. So they may have been product teams that were mostly developers, perhaps with some testers. Now, as we move into, say, site reliability engineering, we're starting to see more cross-skilled uh, teams. Some call them squads. And, and to my perspective, I think that where we're going to end up with is not only a hybrid team or a cross skilled team, we're gonna end up with teams of hybrid humans. Humans that have a core competency, but I, I think are going to start to elevate their skills in other areas, maybe to the not to the same level of core competency, but certainly to the level where they could be considered hybrid. Test-driven developers, I think, is a, a really great example of a hybrid human, but the hybrid human has a lot of other skills uh, to focus on as well. So I think we're gonna move away from specialized uh, individuals or specialized silos, and we're gonna look at customer value and how the hybrid product teams, remember their product teams, are going to look at how they can continuously deliver value to the end consumer, whether the end consumer is internal or, or external. And we'll drill a little bit deeper into that as we move through today's uh, session. So for the second year in the row, now getting ready for the third round, DevOps Institute fields an annual project known as the Upskilling Enterprise DevOps Skills uh, report. We, we go to the community and we ask 
what are the must have nice to have and not as important skills across several uh, several categories and year over year we're very fortunate that we get a, a fantastic response uh, not only on the individual level but on the regional level and also different layers within the organization that take some time to complete this pretty deep survey and the resulting report really has a lot of actionable data again you're welcome to go up to the devops institute website download the full report uh, for free it's pretty deep and it's pretty long and so i'm going to extract some of that data for you today as we start to look at hybrid product teams so not surprisingly, 52% of the respondents, and remember they cross multiple regions and, and multiple layers in the organization, said that the DevOps journey is difficult. Uh, but what I think is more interesting than just the fact that we all know that the journey is, is difficult is the fact that it was almost equally difficult across the three key uh, aspects of DevOps, people, process, and automation. So it isn't necessarily that, um, that it's a human issue or it's a process issue or it's an automation issue. Um, it is equally uh, difficult for all three. And, and again, we're gonna explore a little bit more about that today as we dive deeper into uh, the data. I think the message here is pretty clear that you can't buy DevOps or you can get DevOps purely through automation, that there are multiple elements and there are multiple skill sets that are necessary not only to make DevOps a reality, but to truly create a digital environment which will adapt to the future. So again, not surprisingly, before the pandemic, and you have to remember that this report was published March 10th. So that's pretty significant in terms of time because the data was collected at the end of 2019. The report was published just at the beginning of, of what turned out to be a pretty interesting 2020. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see for 2021 where where some of these things have changed but for 2020 the race for the devops human was on 52 percent of the respondents said they were currently recruiting or plan to recruit within the next 12 months and we've known all along that there's a talent gap within it that in order to move to some type of transformative state in order to go faster more frequently smaller that a different skill set was, was necessary and that the shelf life of existing skills was getting shorter and shorter and shorter. And so to fill those gaps, there was a race for recruiting. There was a race for trying to find, you know, mythical uh, full stack engineers. Uh, we're not sure they, exa they exist in the wild, but being able to find the additional talent that's necessary. So keep in mind, 52% said they were currently recruiting or planning to recruit, but only 31% said that they have a formal upskilling program. And so that was a little disappointing that uh, there are some pretty high profile uh, upskilling programs, Amazon, FedEx in particular, made very big public announcements about their investment in, in upskilling, but only 31% of almost 1300 respondents said that they had some type of formal uh, program and another 20% said that they were looking to develop some type of formal upskilling program and that was encouraging but 38% said they don't now again pre March 10th to post March 10th we know that one of the outcomes of this time in quarantine has been a focus or a refocus on training skilling cross skilling and because of the large number of people that may have have uh, had a career change uh, I think reskilling is going to be very interesting when we look at uh, 2021. So when we look at categories across skills, because you can't, you know, containerize skills into a, a, a single set. There are multiple skills that make up the hybrid human, and, and those skills cross process skills and uh, human skills. They used to be called soft skills. I don't think human, that, that soft skills are soft. I think they're hard. And so we've reframed them as, as human skills, automation skills, functional skills, business skills, automation skills, and specific certifications. And for two years in a row, uh, process human and automation skills came out pretty close in terms of being equally uh, considered must-have. So the hybrid human can't only have automation skills 
or the hybrid human can only have process skills or knowledge. Um, and certainly the hybrid human has to focus on human skills, collaboration, empathy, systems thinking. Uh, again, we'll take a little bit of a deeper uh, dive into that. But for the second year, it came out almost equal across all the layers that process human and automation skills were considered must have for talent that they were trying to hire or as part of their upskilling programs. So as I said, when you start to look at the different layers of the organization, this graph I think is pretty insightful because it tells us where the different layers place their emphasis in terms of must have skills. So the C level very much feels that human skills, right? Your ability to interact and interoperate with other people is important, but the management layer in particular felt that that was critical. And, and we think that it's mostly because the management level is the hiring level, right? Or the level that will directly interface with uh, talent. Uh, the individual con uh, contractor, I'm sorry, the individual contributor felt it was important, but again, not at the same level. And of course, the contractor who's hired for uh, specific projects or roles felt it as well. If you look at automation skills, now we start to equalize a little bit, but that management layer, hiring layer, uh, man the layer that's going to either manage or interact with talent, um, definitely thought that was pretty critical. But look at process skills, right? All four layers came out equal in terms of their emphasis on process skills as being critical. Now, when you, we start to look at process skills, I think we'll see it isn't do you know Agile, or do you know Scrum, or do you know ITIL, uh, or even do you know DevOps. There's a really different level of process skills that rose to the top. So let's start with human skills because human to human interaction and, and I think, again, not to, to give too much credit to the pandemic, but the pandemic was a human crisis, right? It was humans that were being affected not only by their health, but by the, the way that they operated in society, either working from home, locked down, um, or perhaps at risk. Uh, for not being able to do their jobs. And so the ability for hybrid product teams to have good human skills is essential. And in this case, we looked at it even regionally. So uh, everyone agreed that the, the highest um, human skill is collaboration and cooperation. We have to be able to work together. We have to be able to cooperate with each other. And the day of the siloed uh, organization in, in particularly in enterprise IT has to end, right? The day where we have silos that have people with like skills and, um, and they're managed by somebody with like skills and the interoperability between those teams or those units is, is still pretty, pretty, um, it's not a matrix, it's not flat, right? You have to kind of work around the manager or you have to be able to request support. And I think that's going away. Collaboration and cooperation. Collaboration means you ask for expertise. You ask somebody's opinion. Interpersonal skills, again, rose, particularly in North America, but uh, not far behind in EMEA and just globally as being important problem solving skills. And then if you work further down, we start to see the emergence of empathy, the ability to put yourself in somebody's shoes, to see the world through their, through their eyes. And then inclusiveness um, certainly is, is rising up as a must have human skill where we respect um, each other for our uniqueness, whether it's, it's uniqueness in who we are uh, as a person, if it's a uniqueness in our skills, it's, it's the ability to be inclusive in a team and to be diverse. And, and in IT, I think that's something that we're trying to work on, but it's a little bit of slow going. So all of these are considered must have human skills. And they're not necessarily organic, right? They're not necessarily something that you're either born with or you're not. There are definitely techniques to improve your uh, collaborative skills, to work on your problem solving skills, to practice empathy, and to practice uh, inclusiveness. So the collaborative DevOps human is really what's going to shape culture. You can't mandate culture, right? You can be a leader, and, and everybody's a leader, regardless of what your title is. You can be a leader, a transformational servant leader, 
where you inspire the team to operate differently perhaps, but you also serve the team instead of giving direction, right? Instead of giving mandates in terms of what's gonna happen. There's also a movement towards self-regulating teams, agile, DevOps, SRE, all based on self-regulating systems with consequences and policies. Uh, getting practitioners that only have depth of knowledge, but they also have breadth of knowledge. So they understand security, they understand testing, uh, they understand development, they understand infrastructure, and of course, they have a wide swath of human skills as well and we reward learning right instead of punishing for mistakes so we take on a new mentality where failure is an opportunity to improve so that we can mindfully experiment so humans are evolving in 2020. In 2019, I did a lot of advocacy about T-shaping, and I think that's still very relevant, where we all have our core competency, and that's the stem of our T, but we need to fill the top of our T with broad general knowledge, whether it's broad technical knowledge, process knowledge, or even human skill knowledge. We needed to move away from being a single focus specialist to a, a multi-dimensional uh, T-shaped individual. But this year, we actually want you to be E-shaped, where the top of your T really has to focus on human skills. It has to focus on your ability to operate with other humans, to be able to e experience empathy, to collaborate better, to communicate better. And the stem of your T is now your ability to understand process because it's going to be intelligent process that's going to create intelligent automation, right? And then on the right hand side, you do need to be able to explore and groom automation skills, functional skills, technical skills, because after all, we're IT, right? We are technologists and we need to be able to keep those skills growing and evolving and shaping depending on where the where society and of course where our organizations are going and all of this is based on an e experience the ability to make your life and your career experiential your willingness to explore and then of course the ability to execute on what you've learned so i don't think it's any surprise to anyone that humans are complex and as complex humans when we're starting to look at ourselves from a skills perspective, first we have to be good humans, right? We have to be good humans to each other and we have to be able to collaborate and work on a team and, and depend on other humans. We also need to understand underpinning process and then break it down into people, process, technology, automation, functional and technical skills, which is really your craft. So first you have to be a good human you need to understand the process of software delivery and operations, and then you have to hone your craft, both for your core craft and then also for your ancillary crafts. So having said all of that, let's look at some functional skills. Last year, security was in the third place. To, uh, this year, it ties with IT operations. Now, interestingly enough, when we look at the respondents, half for two years in a row self-identified as development and half self-identified as being on the operational side of the house. And yet security and operations really equalized in terms of must have functional skills followed pretty closely by infrastructure. So if you're a developer, you need to understand operations and infrastructure and everybody needs to have some core competency in security, right? You need to be able to write it, build it, uh, test it, secure it, deploy it. Um, and that's part of becoming part of a hybrid product team, becoming part of a hybrid uh, human. And then not far behind that is application development and design. So what this tells us is that as a hybrid human, you need to understand operations, you need to understand development, and you need to understand security. Right, the three major aspects of, of the software delivery cycle. And so it doesn't matter what role you sit in, these are going to be key to every member of the hybrid team and every hybrid uh, human. Now, from a process perspective, I teased you a little bit before by saying, well, we know that the stem of the E-shaped model is process knowledge. And we also know that process skills and knowledge rose to the top spot this year in terms of must-have skills. It's not necessarily which framework 
uh, you're adopting or which set of practices you're using. If you look at these, these top three, they really are about the process behind software delivery, your experience with source control, your understanding of flow, right? How software flows from first idea into production and into development, understanding the process of the software development life cycle, and then how to be able to be agile as part of all of that. Uh, performance tunings, test-driven development. And then we can supplement all of that higher level thinking, which by the way, today humans need to do with frameworks and practices that support that, whether it's Scrum, whether it's site reliability engineering, whether it's value stream mapping, whether it's IT service management, design thinking, there's a lot of good intellectual property built around all of that, but that's not what's going to get you to the must have skills. You use that in order to be able to grow your source control, your flow, your understanding of software development life cycles, your ability to be agile as opposed to doing agile. Right. So again, you have to understand that intelligent process is going to result in intelligent automation. Now, just to stop here for a second and look at growth. So we've certainly seen Agile and DevOps on a growth trajectory year over year for the last several years. But this year in particular, we're seeing a lot of growth in site reliability engineering and SRE. So SRE grew five points from 2019 to 2020. And, and from my perspective, it is the third piece of the self-regulating puzzle. Agile was a self-regulating system, uh, relying on automation. DevOps, certainly CI, CD um, is, is a self-regulating system. And now we're starting to see SRE as production level um, process framework and automation really on the rise. So if you're in operations, pay a little attention to that because that's gonna be part of your hybrid product team journey. From a technical perspective, again, a little switch year over year. Last year, cloud outpaced all of the other must-have skills. This year, CICD toolchain skills uh, outpaced cloud even just by a little bit, but it became very clear that it is going to be the CICD toolchain skills that are going to help DevOps achieve its goals. And when I say achieve its goals, remember DevOps is a set of principles supported by people, process, and automation. But it is going to be your understanding of CI, CD tools, uh, APIs, right, which is going to, you know, help build those pipelines. Uh, so the ability to understand uh, interoperable uh, tool chains. And then uh, cloud, of course, is going to, and cloud native is going to, to I think, be part of our new normal new normal uh, faster than ever before. But your analytical knowledge, your ability to analyze, to do analytics in terms of what's going on, we're starting to see more of a rise in uh, ML ops and AI ops um, as, as part of technical skills, because again, whether it's, it's natively embedded or, or not, uh, we know that that's part of the future as well. So again, from a technical perspective, regardless of what role you sit in, developer security operations, understanding CI, CD tools, um, and those shift, right? Containerization, microservices, Kubernetes, uh, starting to look at release automation, starting to look at uh, continuous testing tools um, on a cloud or not, will really be the most sought after skills uh, particularly as we move past 2020. You know, at the end of the day, it's people, right? At the end of the day, it is people that are going to make the difference. It is a human condition. Transformation can't happen to you. Transformation happens because of you because it is the skills, the critical thinking, the innovation, at least today, that's going to help organizations adapt to changing paradigms. And this year in particular, I think really amp amplified it. We would have gotten here anyhow. We were heading in this direction. The situation at hand globally just pushed us there a little bit faster. So as an individual, it's your responsibility to skill up yourself, to take some of the data that I've shared with you to really dive deeper into uh, perhaps some of the data in the report and then look for ways to learn. 
to continuously learn. Some of that will be formal, some of it will be informal, some of it will be peer to peer, some of it will be through experimentation. But your mission is now to become a hybrid human so you can be part of a hybrid product team. Leaders need to lead a different way. Uh, you know, we've talked a lot in Agile about servant leadership. I'm a scrum master, and so my mission is to be a servant leader and to serve and protect the team. But I also need to be a transformational leader. I need to be somebody that inspires, that guides people into the new normal. And, and I think being a transformational servant leader is something that leaders need to think about. And by the way, that leader isn't necessarily who's sitting in the C-suite. Uh, we're all leaders, right? You may lead your team, you may lead a unit, you may lead uh, just a couple of other people, but we have to work together to promote new ways of working. And then for those that do have the ability and the power to do that, we also need to be able to reward and incent change so that as your organization is evolving, as transformation is happening, and it isn't a big bang transformation, it's little bits at a time. As that's happening, we need to make sure that it's being rewarded, it's being recognized, and in some cases, even being incented. And then from an organizational perspective, I really hope that in the 2021 report, we see more than the number of organizations today that have formal upskilling programs, that if anything, this year, the investment in, in training, in, in the ability for individuals to grow. And, and, and again, investment comes in a lot of different ways. Yes, you can invest money, but also investing time. One of the things I love about site reliability engineering is half of an SRE's time is intended to be spent learning and making things better for tomorrow. And I hope organizations take that message forward too, because that's really the only way the teams truly become hybrid product teams multi-skilled uh, multi -skilled teams with multi-skilled individuals. So I hope you got a little bit of a taste for some of the direction that we saw from 2019 into early 2020. Uh, the new survey will open in August. Uh, if you're listening, I really hope you'll take a, a few minutes and, and complete that. And the 2021 report uh, we'll publish uh, early next year. But in the meantime, go to our website, go to devopsinstitute.com, become a free member, download the report. Uh, there's quotes, there's, there's additional insight. It breaks it down much more regionally and uh, across the organization. Uh, this is our service to the community. We take it very seriously. And I hope today you just got a little bit of a taste for some of the things that you need to grow um, in your own career uh, learning path and hopefully that you can bring to your organization as well. So finally, I wanna, I, I, I wanna leave you, uh, by the time that uh, this has happened, June 18th will have passed, but um, in, on July 16th, every month DevOps Institute does a monthly conference known as Skill Up Days. It's a full six hour, conference with sessions in an expo hall. I know our, our friends at JFrog will be there. And the next topic will be continuous delivery ecosystem. So as we saw, CICD toolchain tools, number one in the technical skills. So if you want to learn a little bit more about that from some amazing speakers, I hope you'll join us uh, then. I want to thank my friends at JFrog for inviting me to uh, share some of this insight for the second year. I hope you have an amazing swamp up and that you all stay healthy and well through the rest of this year. Thanks again. I'm Jane Grohl.